is a South County EMS Board of Oversight meeting on December 14th at 6.03. Hi, everybody. Motion of the minutes from last month. Motion. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Director's report. Director's report. <clears throat> You've got 45 minutes with you? You've got 45 sure. minutes, that's it, I gotta roll. All right, um, let's see. We got a uh, all staff training meeting coming up uh, first week in January. We have the, <coughs> mentioned it before, we have now the option on the ambulance to provide painkillers that are not opiates. So this is a big push from the state um, to give us more options um, for patients who might be concerned about that type of thing. So we have mandated training for that that we need to um, Conduct. And we figured it was a good time to get everybody together in a uh, uh, a potluck um, friendly gathering. So we're hoping that that'll be the uh, first of regular tradition of gatherings amongst our staff and um, helping with camaraderie there. Especially hoping that we've got a facility of our own coming up. Where we'll be able to host that type of thing more easily. Uh, and additional trainings going on. I just completed a three-day ICS 300 class down at MEMA headquarters in Agawam. Um, and the next level 400, next time that comes around, I'll be in that class. So uh, part of our overall emergency management uh, strategy. We had a safety day event at the Deerfield Town Hall. It was organized by the town nurse, the FERCOG nurse, uh, and it included trainings and education by the various public safety departments and our own David Zamoyski conducted a hands-only CPR training and AED familiarization. So the town hall staff, they have an AED on hand um, and considering the number of people that work there and come in and out of the facility on a regular basis, uh, they were all enthusiastic about learning CPR and hopefully they'll never have to use it. Um, it was lovely. Yeah. It was really nice. And, uh, and actually just tonight, uh, one of our uh, crew members is bringing um, an ambulance over for equipment familiarization orientation to Old Deerfield Fire. Uh, it's not unusual for us to request uh, the other fire departments to scenes if we have difficult extrications or perhaps critical patients. Um, so that's kind of a regular thing that we do. We bring them um, and show them our equipment so they can feel comfortable with it uh, if they ever need to use it. Uh, the facility stuff, again, you know, we don't know what we're going to get. We have no idea, uh, but to plan for kind of a worst case scenario, uh, I've included on the capital budget a list of items that for a 24 seven public safety agency um, are considered <coughs> critical. So that would be the emergency generator backup, um, as well as the uh, diesel exhaust removal system since the building is occupied 24 seven and diesel exhaust is a known carcinogen. Um, that's standard practice for those facilities. Access control and security for our medication and um, our expensive equipment. And then uh, telephones, IT, um, that build out inside. Not sure what we're going to get, so plan for the worst. I have estimations on that based on um, public documents, existing RFPs, existing um, grant information, other municipalities, what they spent on those items as well as manufacturer's information. I've also included a list of kind of a soup to nuts, just everything you'd find in the building. Um, so, you know, you think about your house at, at, you know, at home and all the items that are inside of that, um, all the little bits, the knickknacks. Um, I've included a page of that itemized um, and I built this off of, it's actually a document that um, New York State Fire Service, I believe, provided to help estimate you know, what you would need to replace if you experienced a fire, but it was a great jumping off point. Um, so that's included. Those are all um, research, researched um, amounts for those items. Obviously not the most expensive or anything like that. Um, but the total there, um, soup to nuts, uh, I estimated to be $17,205. Um, that's everything from the doormats, to a set of dishes, to a mop bucket, to a window treatment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's also included. The final, or last week's, or last month's 
I thought was going to be a final draft. This one's definitely much more of a final draft of our um, collections policy. Uh, there was a concern last month about some ambiguity of um, terms within it. So that's been cleaned up, removed, and I also changed the formatting of it to hopefully make it a little bit more easily understood. Um, Excuse me, did you send yeah. a copy of us, that to us? Yes, that's included in your packet. Um, I think it's the okay. very last item in your packet. Okay. Um, the substance of it hasn't changed since the last draft you saw, just the formatting and cleaning up that, that vagueness. Um, so are we ready to make a motion on that? Right off policy, or you want to study it some more? I'd like to look at it if you don't mind. Okay. Is it something that we need to implement right away? Are we having big issues? or? Uh, we have no issues. We do have some people that have um, applied for hardship, but right now they wouldn't face any sort of actions or anything um, if, if this is delayed. So I think we can certainly take some time, but um, I would hope that you know we can get it maybe next month. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know yeah. if you guys I just haven't seen it. Um, That's fine. We just talked about it last month, and we're okay. just trying to... Get rid of it. Yeah. Great. Um, I did have somebody call me. It was a, a local resident. They were calling on behalf of a love behalf of a loved one who received an ambulance bill, um, and their insurance refused to pay. And uh, she was rightfully upset. You know why was she paying for? Was, was that a different insurance company? Is that what it was that sparked that whole thing? I mean, rather than uh, yeah. the local. Well, I was curious <clears throat> what. Um, was this one that we don't normally deal with, or? It is, it was a. What, I mean, you can say. Yeah, it was Blue Cross Blue Shield, but out of California. And. Really? Yes, so the, obviously the, this person was confused. They're spending a lot of money for health insurance and they figured it would cover the, the cost of the ambulance. So, um, I got some information from her <coughs> regarding the bill and I called Comstar um, to ask what was going on. And my understanding and what was explained to me is it's not unusual for health insurance agencies to deny these claims initially. That they do a cursory once over, they say, oh, we don't have a contract with that ambulance agency, which we wouldn't because we're not doing discharges or, or interfacility transfers. And so therefore, we'll just deny it since they're, quote, out of network. Um, and the representative from Comstar said it's it's cumbersome, but it's a simple procedure of just appealing the decision and asking for um, a closer look at it by the insurance company. And 99.9% .9 of the time, they say, oh, you're right, it was an emergency. We're not actually allowed to refuse that because you didn't have an option on who you received when you called 911, so we'll cover it. Um, it means, though, that the onus is on the patient to make that call to file that appeal. We're not allowed to do it either as a department or the billing company because we're not allowed to advocate you know, for that person's wishes, they have to do it. So she said this wasn't unusual, but it can cause some consternation. And I'm having them basically generate a breakdown of what type of situations, what type of providers you know, would this happen with, and are there ways that we can eliminate that, necess that, um, that requirement for an appeal just so our patients aren't um, presented with that type of hurdle in, in getting reimbursement or getting paid. You, you said that she was a, a, local, a, a local resident. Why would she have California insurance? Uh, I, I don't know. I presume that an employer <clears throat> you know, is based out of a different state. Um, it's no might. different than um, my Blue Cross Blue Shield on um, the space out of Pennsylvania. This is for my husband. My husband works for the state system there. So. And, and sometimes they, it, it, there's nothing you're going to be able to do, Zach. But no, I think but it's really I, nice what you did do, the procedure of reaching out and explaining it. And then, and then you know about it so that next time you can yeah. tell. Because there's not a lot you're going to be able to do. <clears throat> what the insurance companies... Um, even even Pennsylvania from here, they're, they it's out of region, so they reject. The first round is always rejected. And, and I get that, but it's I, 
try not to bog down our service or our billing people. Isn't like you said, it, it's on to the patient's responsibility to take care of it. It is. Right. Yeah. It is. But it's I mean, probably it just doesn't ha happen very often. Right. I mean, my husband had to go to the emergency room this past summer, and they rejected the payment. And it's like, listen, we have PPO, you know, the high end yeah. stuff, and so all we had to do is, you know, you just sure. refile it. You call and complain. You have, you're on hold for. You know, well, a half well, an think hour, about 45 it. minutes. Think about it. We've been doing, what, three years? This is the first time we've had one of these. Oh, yeah. right. You know, and and so I'm not complaining. I'm just thinking know. that, um, you know, if yeah. our, our service, it's, it's great to reach out and help the people. But, you know, just hearing about first time, I didn't know if it's something that happens in, you know, I, I'd see our agency be bogged down in chasing after this. You, know, you really said you can't yeah, on their behalf. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure with insurance companies, it's always yeah. deny, deny, deny. And Until they make their money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, the, but but Kip. On the other hand, this is our, our this is our local service, and you know I, I just I think it's wonderful that Zach was able to. I mean now he understands it, and it will be a lot quicker. But I, I think it's wonderful that he took the time because that's you know that's really what we're here for. I mean we're supposed to be delivering really good service, and that's really stressful. The ambulance. I unlike, mean, what, unlike the insurance company. I know. So. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, I've got um, the updated um, SCEMS budget, it's dated 1214. I've already received two criticisms about the size of the font. Sorry about that. Um, part of that is I've included the actual amounts spent for each respective fiscal year, so we can see you know, what, what budget was approved and then what was spent that year. Uh, because of that as well, the numbers for the 2019 budget have been adjusted um, uh, in some cases where they had been estimated based on trends, They've, they are now estimated, or based on estimation. So things like the vehicle repairs and stuff like that, um, sorry, not estimations, averages. Um, things like vehicle repairs is representative of an average over the last four years instead of just a trend. Uh, we're already, um, doing better at this point in the year than we were last year, and I think a lot of that has to do with the new ambulance that we have. We're putting less wear and tear in our older ones, um, but uh, that is one instance where it's an average. Uh, the other uh, major point that is an average as well is the employee benefits cost. Uh, I've talked about this at prior budgets. The formulas I use to calculate um, the benefits always calculate higher than what is reality. Um, so the Deerfield Clerk's Office will usually provide those numbers before the start of the fiscal year about what they actually know will be taken out, um, but I've included an amount that is an average of the previous years. Um, so that will be, I think, more accurate representation of what we expect to spend. As a result, um, this is the... Um, I think the lowest budget um, to date. So we're still we're we're honing those. We're we're tracking in. We're getting our bullseye on exactly what we expect to be spending. Um, so that's good news. Um, and there's also, as I said last week, an increase in the um, revenue um, expectations that I think is is closer to to accurate. And I don't think it'll move much from this last estimation. So, Jack, we're still going to have another $700,000 from retained earnings, like I heard a couple times last year at various finance committee meetings? Uh, I think we would be very hard-pressed to find that much money. It's not going to come back every year? Yeah. Every year, $700,000? Uh, <laughs> if I remember, we were in a little little tiny room in Deerfield last night, argue, or last year, arguing about that. Yeah. Um, well, our, our diminishing retained earnings every year um, is part of the discussion for tonight uh, because we are... We're not going to see those retained earnings every year, um, so we need to really figure out um, where we want to apply the retained earnings that um, we do have. Um, so I, there's there's a sheet with the um, with our enterprise fund budget, and then there's also a sheet for our capital budget. Um, the capital budget sheet includes those items that I mentioned earlier, those estimations of those critical need items and the facility equipment, as well as the normal annual uh, future ambulance replacement um, 
seed money that we put in every year. All those things added together, um, the capital budget comes to $204,000. Now, last year we used, uh, typically what we would do is we would use those retained earnings to pay for those capital items, which is what we've done in the past, and we had talked about using the retained earnings that we had to outfit this new facility. We had been talking about that for a while. We applied a lot of retained earnings to the normal budget last year. We lowered the assessment by 15%, um, which was also um, lowered the year before uh, by almost 20%. So we're at a point where our budget is the smallest it's ever been, our expenses are anticipated to be the smallest it's ever been, our revenue is, is higher than we ever anticipated it to be. Um, but the assessments to the individual towns would go up compared to last year if we don't apply any sort of retained earnings. Well, my question is, they're not really going up. The only reason they appear to go up is because we reduce them with the, the reduction in retained earnings. Retained earnings. Correct, okay. yes, yes. So, yes. so our budget is, is down and our revenue is up. Um, yeah. Uh, so the, the retained earnings that we have certified and available, um, make sure I'm getting this number right, are $412,382. Of that, $108,000 has already been set aside uh, for that regular ambulance replacement, um, which leaves a balance of $304,382 in retained earnings um, that we have available to either uh, pay for those capital items or lower the assessments on the budget. Can I ask you, what, yeah. what was the date of that uh, certified retained earnings? Uh, it was it, back in September, wasn't it, Zach? Or early yeah. October? Something, I think September sounds right. It was whenever the, the, the budget was, or sorry, DOR certified the town of Deerfield. Carol, I don't know, is that an annual thing? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You you what happens is um, you lose your free cash, your ability to use free cash in July right. until it's recertified. Yep. And I then you that. have free cash. Yep. You just decide what to do with that. Um, so I, basically it's it's gonna come down to um, the Board of Oversight deciding how they want to apply that three hundred and four thousand dollars in change as far as our FY19 budget goes. I'm just throwing this out because one of the capital expenses is, you know, putting aside money for the ambulance every year. We have a five-year rotating um, thing. So what I was thinking is none of the towns want to see an increase on anything. So I was thinking that we could apply our 204000 to our assessments and use because we, we probably aren't going to have the building until February or March. Uh, you know, March 1st is what Dick said to use as a, you know, good date. So sometime in February or March. So <coughs> we're almost to the end of the year. So what I'm thinking of is that we could outfit the building with um, the, the ambulance fund money that we've set aside. And then next year, um, uh, follow up with um, like a double, a couple double payments, or the last three years do a third, third, third more, something like that, so that we can make up the money. Because this is town money that's just sitting there towards the ambulance. So if we outfit the building with it, which Zach's figures are kind of squishy, um, and we might get donations or whatever, and then we're, we're not asking the town for more money, but then if we plan to make, you know, increase our, uh, instead of the five year, go to the three year or whatever, however we want to do it, um, ambulance replacement fund. That was just a thought to throw out, but that way we could, we would still have money set aside, $100,000 for our operating um, reserve. We could use 204 towards um, assessment reduction and we would have 108 set aside for um, trying to furnish the building, towards furnishing the building. It's going to be short, but we could um, use some of the reserve funds as Zach does purchases or offset donations, 
you know, ask people to donate their old, you know, whatever they have extra, whatever. That kind of thing. I don't know. It's just a thought. Also, Any other thoughts? Oh, and also, you know, our rental money is in there. And if we're moving into the new building, the rental money then becomes available too. So, whatever. For some of the, you know, purchases that would be more permanent. Like Jack, did you leave the rental money in there? Um, yeah, the rental money is still budgeted for in FY19 under the... Um, is it currently thirty six hundred dollars? Thirty six thousand. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry. I think Zach has it as fifty. Um, yeah, it's it's thirty six thousand for South Deerfield Fire District, eleven thousand for the Sunderland um, Fire Department, and thirty two hundred for the Whaley Building for a total of fifty thousand dollars. So that's going to be reduced basically by twenty thousand dollars. We get our new building. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Well, it just—it doesn't make sense to collect the money when we don't have to collect it. And so I just thought we could think about how we want to fund the capital without having to, and still be able to lower the assessments to the town. So what, what I what I would ask, I, I don't know, you know, Zach says he needs a generator. We don't know what size a generator, we don't, we don't, I, I mean, are you buying a $12,000 Kohler or are you buying a $120,000 cat? Yeah, this you, was based you, you off know, of estimations, you know. Right, so you, so, you don't know. And, right. You know, and, and you're assuming that you have to put in a, an air filtration system. I mean, I don't, I don't know what's in the building. Right. No, no. Right, we don't know. Maybe they maybe they have included it. You know, they just put together their their physical plant building, so they I'm sure they have to have something in there. Mm -hmm. So I mean, until you have a better idea of what you know actually what's going to be inside of it, it's 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 tough to right to put numbers down. You know, maybe maybe there maybe you would get a generator donated. I know where three generators are right now. So. Can but, but part of this, I mean, for, for Zach, he had to have this Correct. to the Deerfield um, Capital Improvement Committee by December 1st. So, because um, that's when all, all the capital mm -hmm. projects Understood. are due. So, Zach put this together based on what? Worst, know, case, scenario. worst case scenario. And so that was why I was saying, you know, maybe we can still use our retained earnings to lower the assessments. We could have the ability of using the ambulance money for the first year and then double up some payments and stuff for the next year or whatever. I, I don't feel well, comfortable I, I asking the town to pay more. Um, uh, Jack, how much is your budget down from last year, percentage-wise? Uh, $16,000. <laughs> yeah, but that's, I mean, when you have a heavy, you know, Payroll heavy. Well, that's, okay. so that's pretty good. It that that's, that 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 was like we we all everyone that's sitting at this table knew that retained earnings would not were not a bottomless pit that would last forever, right? Oh, okay. So the first year we had what twenty percent. Next last year we had fifteen percent. So at the most you would expect to use ten percent of your retained earnings this year, anyways. So what would how much would that be? Uh. 10% of our retained earnings would be $40,000. Okay, so you're not you're not talking 200,000. So how much did we how much retained earnings did we apply last year? 284,145. $284,000? 144,000. But last I think it was last I don't know, it was May or June somewhere on there when we got we had over, it was close to 918,000, so yeah. that's when we decided to lower that assessment. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and we, we, just have to, we just have to pick a number that we're, we're comfortable from retained earning and just use that, that number. I, I think it's, you know, we, 
We've started with FY18, including that operational reserve amount, that 10%, that 100,000, which I don't anticipate to dig into or anything like that. I think it would be totally appropriate to use $100,000 of the retained earnings to cover that expense in FY19. Um, so there's no, you know, there's no net impact on the budget as far as that that reserve amount goes. I think, after looking at this, I, I think realistically, I, I think that we could sharpen our pencils with some of these uh, um, estimates and, and things like that, and maybe lower this number right off the get-go so we know <coughs> more accurately what we're looking for instead of billing for a lot and then just having more retained earnings again. I, and again, I, I have no problem, you know, having a budget that's, I mean, you always, you always want to give yourself a, um, you, and, and unfortunately the way our thing works, we never want to be on the short end of our budgets because the state is so difficult. But, um, but you, yeah, hit, hit, if you hit our budget within two or three percent, that's, that's good. You don't, you, I mean, you don't need to put yourself 15 or 20 percent to the, to the good. I think that's what you're what you're also saying, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. So, you, so you want us to come up with a policy of what we want to use for retained earnings and everything for next? Um, yeah, I, moving forward, so we can supply a budget and, and show the towns, you know, what their assessments. Are well, going I, would, to look like I, would, I would I would submit this budget that you have now, with 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 no use of retained earnings, and and tell them that you know we're going to. You know, we're going to sharpen our pencils, and we're also going to give a. I mean, you can give them a number to start with if, if somebody needs a number, right? Sure. It's easier to go down. True story. Than to go, than to go up. <laughs> yeah. Would you say so? I would say so. Yeah, it's easier to go down, Zach. <clears throat> but I, I mean, I, I feel like we're doing very well. Yeah. Um, the payroll is under is really under control, and Zach's handling that very well. And you know, our collections are doing well. I mean, a town to the south, a town to the south of us asks us, you know, they're they're looking at they're looking at doing something, and they have a thousand calls a year. I said, well, I can tell you how much it's going to cost to run your service, a paramedic level service, that you will get 90, 95 percent of your, you be able to handle 90, 95 percent of your calls. I can tell you how much it's going to cost, and they said, well, how can you do that? He says, that's what we do. You know, I and and they and, and if you talk to anybody, I think they're gonna they're gonna pretty much agree with that. I mean, unless you're gonna have unless you're gonna have all volunteer staff your ambulance, which we know doesn't work. I I mean, we're we're in pretty good shape. It's just we have to decide how how we want to fund the new building. Correct. Outfitting the new building, and I think we can do that. And, and you guys gonna with talk, cash that the, we have. The the, the Deerfield Board of Selectmen have to talk and finalize your the, the, the rent, the things also. I mean, what, what you guys are doing, and you know, somehow somebody's got to figure out what's going to be there at some point. And so you guys have to figure that out too, mm -hmm. so you can let us know. Right. Uh, we haven't, we haven't spoken, I know you can. but I think, I think that uh, we pretty much, it, it's going to be as we spoke of, yeah. A year or so, but we're, yeah, we're not going to increase the work regardless of what we need to do. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm confident that's going to happen. It's yeah. just everything has. To, I mean, yeah. and 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 when they, they they turn the key over to you guys, and guess what? We may not be able to move in that first day. <laughs> I mean, we may have to figure out what's what what's going on. Right, but I, I but I you also feel like for I huh? feel like this is prepare for it. absolutely. But this is doable. It's very doable, and we are in good shape. And you know, we're we're being successful. <coughs> and the receipts, Zach is very being conservative on receipts. Um, I mean, we were worried about you know what the impact of what's happening with the medical insurance, but you know what? That's still in the air, and there's nothing we can do about it. We have to deal with whatever comes down the pike. And um, I keep fussing about it. And, worrying about it. It's just not, it's not worth it. We're, we're doing okay. Everybody's going to be in the same boat. So, and you know, struggling to figure out how to cover costs if they're going to cut costs. So, and, you know, cut our receipts more. Um, 
So we'll just we just have to wait and see what happens. It hasn't happened yet, so I discussed with uh, we discussed with Lieutenant Governor the other day about how regional ambulance we actually saved energy because we we're talking about green communities and how we actually saved we saved energy by regionalizing our ambulance crew. Now we send out one ambulance. We don't have you know we don't have intercepts. We don't have you know EMT paramedics driving around their own cars and so. So did they say that they were going to not harass us about? Yeah, I'm still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. But the lieutenant governor came out with an entourage of 16 vehicles and <laughs> state yeah. police and 14. <laughs> Good job with the budget there. Sir. Right, thank you. Uh, the only other thing uh, that I skipped over, um, the personnel costs there, um, they still reflect the 2% COLA. Um, increase from the previous year. They don't represent steps or anything like that. Um, no decisions been made. No decisions so. has been made. Um, the other thing too is uh, the director's salary for FY19 reflects a 2% increase as well over my current salary, um, which has not changed since FY17. So. We didn't get that fixed yet. It was fixed I for FY17, but no, no adjustments or changes were made I, for I did FY17. Not realize, Zach is five cents off the, I thought we switched. Okay. Remember I, the so we're going to get it right this there? year? He, he was a nickel an hour, I mean a nickel an hour off on the scale. And I, I could have sworn that we, I, I was shocked that it was 36.06 instead of 36.11. And I know it sounds so stupid, but he should have been fixed when we, I don't know how we got dropped. But anyway, it's still a nickel short. And so we will get him into the right step. And um, I don't know how we're going to do this. <laughs> well, you got a little time to work on it, so. I know. Nope. I don't know. All right, what else you got? Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Any other discussion? Thank you, Mr. Executive Director. Okay. Zach, I just want you to know I really appreciate all the training that you've been doing and participation and outreach to the community. It's really, it's been very nice. Yeah. And, uh, I, uh, I hear good things from the hospital. You know, Zach is working with the hospitals on stuff because they're kind of behind. And to collect Medicaid, and Medicare, they have to now have all this compliance stuff, and then all of a sudden they're showing up wanting to do stuff like through Homeland Security and different groups. And um, Zach has, has been one of the ones that has represented, you know, and participated, and that's very, really nice. Well, we're a member of the community, and medicine is evidence based, and new evidence is coming out all the time, so. Well, it, it, strengthens, it strengthens the relationship with the hospital, and um, it looks it makes it look really, us all look very good. So, I'm, I, it makes me proud to have our community be part of South County. Uh, next meeting, January third Thursday, would be the eighteenth. I won't be here. I won't what? be here either. Want to go back to the second Thursday for the two months in a row? Yeah, would you mind? That would be uh, the 11th, um, which is exactly seven days before the 18th. <laughs> Math checks out. You know what? Yep. Uh, could I we, can verify could that. We, can, we, can we actually skip it's cold down to the, because yeah. next it's month warm. is, is a, that, Florida? <laughs> um, because we need to sort out the budget stuff more. Okay. We, instead of being earlier, 20, we do later. 25th, 4th Thursday. Yeah, would that be okay? Because uh, then we'll have sort of more. You guys aren't in Boston that week. No, no the, the week Boston before. that week is before. That's why neither one of us can go. Um, and and uh, Trevor, I think Trevor's going to be able to go by then too. Um, and Jonathan usually goes. Mm -hmm. he He's going tonight. But um, so, so the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth is fine. Would that be okay? Then we okay. have more. Yes, very good. That will give us more opportunity to um, work with the finance committee on the steps and versus the COLA and or what, you know. There's no sense in voting on a budget when we don't have the final information. And I, I'm, Wendy doesn't get back till the 15th. And I just can't imagine that 
we're going to be able to meet with the finance committee and have that all sorted out by the 11th. You might have we have a meeting on the 8th, January 8th, finance committee. Okay. But I don't know if that would give people enough time to do that. Yeah. So I, I would I, I would think that it would be more productive to do it the 25th or whatever. So it's, it is, is the 25th the 4th? 25th. It's already in my phone. I can't change it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> Robert. Adjourned at 1840.